Hello. All right, so I'm making some noise today because you can't do ambient stuff all the time. Our noise is kind of fun. Uh, I've made a few of these. Here's one of the finished patches. Uh, here's another one. This one's using clouds. So you can make ambient kind of textures. Most of them came out a bit harsh. And we'll do one more. So this is the last patch. And I've put some feedback through a flanger, which gets a bit silly, to be honest. So the idea for this came from someone else's video where they were using Eurorack hardware. And somebody asked me in a comment if we could do this in BCV. And the answer is yes, you can. So as always, it's not exactly the same, but the technique does work. So let's get started and have a look how this works. Okay, so here's a video I've ripped off. There's a short clip and it's quite an unusual technique because what he's doing is mixing a CV signal into an audio mixer and then passing it through a wave folder. Um, and you probably know that kind of audio and CV signals are interchangeable. Um, so you can put an audio signal into a CV input and that gives you audio rate modulation. That's usually fun. Uh, but if you put a CV signal into an audio mixer, uh, you normally just don't hear anything. Or if you do, it'll be a kind of nasty click or a pop through the speakers. So I think the trick here is sending it through a wave folder. I'm using Debris Artist from Vault here, and I've got the Wavetable LFO from VCV, a noise source and a mixer. So the way this works is the signal from the LFO and the noise mixes together and it kind of interacts through the wave folder to make these kind of strange crunchy textures. Okay, so let's start patching. So if I take the output from the Wavetable LFO, I'd use blue cables for audio. And you might hear you get a kind of nasty click there. Let's turn that down a bit. Then I'm going to turn this channel right down for the noise because noise normally comes through quite loud. So I'm going to use white noise there. And hopefully yeah, you can hear that. So if I just turn the LFO back up. So if you've got the level of the noise quite low, it kind of interacts with the LFO and it will just come through occasionally. Just turn up the speed slightly. And if we're using the wavetable LFO, we can vary the shape as well. And that also gives you different texture. So that's going a bit faster. And obviously you can change the uh, some of the parameters on the wave folder as well. Okay, so that's not sounding particularly good yet. And the other thing you can do is you can patch in feedback. So if I take channel three right down and just split off the second output. Oh, that gives you some quite nasty sounds as well. And we'll just um, leave that quite low. So that's the basic principle, and you wouldn't really expect that to work, um, but it does, so it's a bit weird. Then the next thing I did is I got an envelope, um, because in the, in the video I linked at the start, the idea was to not use any clocks or sequences. So if you make anything kind of rhythmic, um, it's kind of unsynced and kind of wonky organic timing, which is quite an interesting idea as well. So. I'm using this one from Bog Audio because it's um, it can loop. So if I just, I'm not sure if you need to change that, if I just change that to loop mode. And then what we can do is we can take the end of trigger output, end of cycle. And then we can just speed up the LFO. I just need to change a few bits on here. Done that wrong. It's not the end of cycle you want, it's just the envelope. Let's turn that up slightly. Okay, you can hear that now.
And so you can hear that just varying the speed. Um, another thing you can do is add a kind of bass drum layer. So if I just get a trommer, I'll just zoom out slightly. And one thing I found is you can actually use the audio output as the kind of gate signal. And that'll just give you a kind of sub layer. So I'll just turn this down a second. So you can hear that's kind of triggering at the same time. And you can also get a second bass drum. Get a more of a, a regular kick. And you can use the end of cycle trigger output on there. going to turn up the decay on that one so we get a nice boom. There you go, a bit much. Okay, so that's the basic idea and then you can just obviously add effects to this as well. So we add some clouds for example and that'll just give you a bit more texture. So I'll just take this noise output and stick that into clouds. And then we turn up the density. And then maybe give it some reverb as well. That one's feedback. A bit more volume. Okay, and that's the idea really. So um, you can also experiment with, just to mute that for a second, that's um, getting a bit loud. So you can also experiment with um, adding effects to the feedback. Um, things like modulation effects work quite well, phasers, flanges, or just uh, adjust the level of the feedback there and there. Let's hear that, how that sounds. So that's a basic idea and then obviously you can modulate this stuff as well to give it some variation. Um, so if I get a chordal module and turn the speed down on there. That's going to modulate the feedback amount. Uh, we can also change the amount of wave folding. just changing the level of the noise there as well. So there you go. Uh, not a hugely useful technique to be honest, um, but you can make some interesting textures with this. And it's one of those things that, you know, just try and do it, to see if you can. Uh, just see if it works and it does so there you go have fun cheers